Hello, I'm Christina and welcome to my channel. So, I am pregnant. In this video, I'm going to be sharing my two-week wait symptoms. So, all the symptoms that I experienced from seven days past ovulation up until 14 days past ovulation. On seven days past ovulation, I could not sleep. I was having a bad, bad, bad anxiety attack. And I couldn't sleep and at 2.30 in the morning, I decided to take a pregnancy test. And I was like, I don't know why. I just, it came up negative or what I believed was negative at the time. I was sleep deprived and it looked negative. Later on that morning, after maybe two hours of sleep, I picked it out of the trash. Uh, you know, if you're trying to conceive, you know the drill. You pick your pregnancy tests out of the trash to double check just in case you didn't see a line. And guess what? I saw a line. And a lot of people say not to do that because it shows up as, or any line that you see after will basically be a false positive because it's an evaporation line. But I have checked other pregnancy tests in the past from the trash and there was no evaporation line, especially from this brand. So I saw it and I was like, that's weird. That's a very dark and thick and pink evaporation line for especially this time of my cycle. So I took another test at about 9 a.m. that morning, still seven days past ovulation. And if you want to see all this unfold <laughs> up until this point, the second test I'm taking, uh, the second test I took that day, um, you can watch my pregnancy test video that I shared. But basically I saw another faint line and this time it was on a fresh test and it was the faintest line like you look at it and you're just like what are you talking about you crazy person but I saw it maybe my vision's very good <laughs> I don't know I put it in that pregnancy test checker app and altered the photo as you would you know as they offer you to do in the pregnancy test checker app and I saw a line I put it on my group my um, online trying to conceive Facebook group that I'm a part of and other women saw the line other women saw nothing and they were like sorry I don't see it and I was like that's fine I totally don't blame you it's very faint I'm surprised that I even see it but I did see it it wasn't there <laughs> I'm not crazy <laughs> um, well I am crazy but that's besides the point I did see the line regardless of whether or not I'm crazy actually one woman called me insane for checking that early and I was like wow that's really rude <laughs> but I tried not to let it get to me and I just blocked her you have to be careful on those Facebook groups people get a little catty but yeah the reason why I double checked the I didn't mention this before the reason why I double checked the line from the garbage was because after sleeping for two hours and waking up I had the worst taste in my mouth and it tasted like I was sucking on a bag of pennies <laughs> It was just this like metallic, disgusting taste, and I have it now, and I've had it for the past two weeks straight every single day. Um, it just it's in the back of my throat, and it just is a constant metallic -y taste in my mouth. And I woke up, and I was like, and then I was like, what is that? And then I like had a moment of, oh, oh my, God. <laughs> I need to check that test to see if I see anything, and. Lo and behold, I saw the line. Anyway, that was seven days past ovulation. I was very tired. I'm looking down at my notes because I wrote them all down in my pregnancy journal. <laughs> Before 70 DPO, days past ovulation, I was the same as usual, slightly nauseous on and off, sore-ish boobs, very grumpy and tired. I was feeling like tingly cramps in my stomach that day, for, or my in my abdominals that day, just like weird tingles and cramps. Um, now I'm thinking that might have been gas, to be honest, but um, I was very tired because I hadn't slept all night, but I think that's why I was tired. Also, the fact that I had just become pregnant, so so that was seven days past ovulation. Eight days past ovulation, the following day, the lines got a little bit darker. They were still very faint. I was a bit nauseous that day. I still had the metallic taste. I had some cramps, like period-like cramps. Also had gas, so... It definitely, the cramps weren't as intense as period cramps, but they were similar in feeling. 
And again, I think that might have been gas or maybe just from implantation. My boobs started to get swollen and sore and I was pretty tired still. I also had a headache that day and I took Tylenol to alleviate the pain because it was pretty bad and it felt better. And I also started to get that white creamy cervical mucus, um, which is an indicator for me because it's happened in my previous two pregnancies. Um, that I'm pregnant. So the metallic taste and the white creamy cervical mucus that is different from the normal kind for me. I know the consistency of it. I could tell that it was the pregnancy kind, the kind that I had had in my previous, sorry if you can hear neighbors talking outside and neighbors upstairs pacing the floor and dropping things on the floor. <laughs> um, life filming in your apartment in when everyone else is home. So yes, that was eight days fast ovulation. Nine days fast ovulation, I slept all day and I was very emotional. <laughs> and that's when the emotion started to happen. Like I just would cry at everything. Now, not so much anymore, but mm, a little bit moody and snappy now, but I was very emotional, very panicky. I was panicky because I had an incident with, uh, speaking to a doctor on the phone. I had, it was a misunderstanding. Don't know if I'll share that in this video because it's already getting quite long, but turned out everything is fine as of now. So that's what happened on 9 DPO, just slept most of the day. Um, 10 days past ovulation, my boobs started to get very sore, very emotional again, more cervical mucus that was white and creamy. The bad taste in my mouth continued and I was very tired. 11 days past ovulation, all the same symptoms, taste in my mouth, sore boobs. I had a bit of a backache that day. I was a little nauseous, like waves of nausea. The sore boobs started to get really bad that day. So it felt like my nipples were being stabbed with acid covered knives. <laughs> I know that is a very descriptive way of saying what happened or what it felt like but it was just the worst pain i had ever experienced in my boobs pain comes and goes luckily in the boobs but i still sometimes experience that now being four weeks i also at that point was starting to get really hot in my abdomen my lower abdominals i just started to like i felt like they were just hot like i touching it it was just like really warm and then I like had my husband touch it and he was like it doesn't feel warmer than the normal but for me it felt hot it just felt like I don't know really warm like it was just burning up and I was very very bloated 12 days past ovulation I had the bad taste in my mouth again I still had the acid nipples <laughs> never experienced that kind of pain before that's why I wrote down I said worse than I've ever had uh, tired but not as bad. I noted down that I should probably take it easy more. Very bloated most of the day but more in the evening and that's still continuing now. That was 12 DPO. 13 DPO was very much the same. Tired, sore boobs, uh, bloated, bad taste in my mouth. <laughs> and 14 DPO was also the same. So nothing new happened. It was all the same. Uh, that was the day that I got the darkest line on my pregnancy test. And I got my first positive on the digital actually on nine days past ovulation, my first morning urine. And then I actually wrote down 15 days past ovulation just as a bonus. <laughs> uh, nauseous. I was very nauseous that morning. I was constipated. I'm still having some trouble with that on and off gas pains. Pains on my sides that are coming and going so like I still get that now like if I make a sudden movement sometimes it just hurts in one of my sides um mainly my right side but it happens on both sides and my boobs were still sore and they still are sore yeah they're really sore you just can't touch them I just can't can't go near them can't hug people putting on bras kind of hurts that was all of my symptoms during my two week wait period I did find out a lot earlier than a lot of people do. Even when I did my HCG beta, my doctor said the first beta was so low that she was like, I'm surprised you even got a positive on pregnancy test. It was that low, but the levels tripled two days later. So it was all good. But for now, I'm tired because I filmed three videos and I still have one more that I want to film and I'm starting to feel like I need to put my head down. But yes, thank you so much for watching. Um, stay tuned for more updates and more pregnancy related videos because I have been dying 
to make these videos for the past year and a half and um, I just am really looking forward to making more so I hope you stay tuned subscribe like this video comment down below I'd love to hear from you and um, that's it I will see you next time